two Brits. Well, yeah. see there, Eddie Sheriff didn't race with a 10-8 this time on the button. He's gone back to oh. his old style. Do you think, Phil, that he's looked down at his stack and told himself, look, let's get one point at a time now. You know, here's where he's gotten himself in Race trouble. 14, Roland? Roland Wolf has gotten himself in trouble by, you know, raising with the five deuce to six deuce, and it costs him some money each time. So let's see if Fraser can figure it out. Do you think Roland's, uh, maybe the adrenaline is pumping? Did he lose focus? Has he lost sight? Oh. Has he forgotten about Fraser? Well, he knows now he's in bad shape. <laughs> he's in terrible shape. Wow. <laughs> Roland's in such bad shape that he <laughs> he's going to have to make a massive play. Now, Ian Fraser is clever enough to check this for sure. Nice check. Let Roland bluff off another. Yeah. I'll check. I'll check. Check. So it gets number 18,000. I've played this game before. None of bad, huh? So there goes Roland for no reason with six deuce from the big blind. Could have taken a free flop. Instead, bluffed off 12,000 and now 18 more thousand. You know, trying <laughs> to push the envelope. That's the old, that's what they want. They want the old, they want the old uh, roll on back. <laughs> you know, and he's basically just handed the chip lead to. Cool. And this feels like one of those times where, I mean, Ken Fraser check this three times and let, let Roland just speed off the stack? I don't think he can. Uh, wow, what a card for Fraser. And, and Roland de Wolf now has gotten very lucky in one sense. He picked up a straight and a flush draw with that card. <laughs> you can believe it. <laughs> it's gone from nothing to a billion outs. But Ian Frazier fired right out at it this time, so. <laughs> I'll tell you what. If and Roland, wow. I mean, I'm surprised he called there. He made a good call because if a heart comes, he does win. If a three comes, he does win. These turn decisions are pretty interesting and frankly, kind of the only interesting decisions so far. I yeah. mean, Roland, as Phil likes to call him, is Why? certainly taking an aggressive stance with the six deuce off. It's fine, it's a little spewy, but you know, yeah. if you think you can exploit somebody, fine. Go ahead, flop play is normal, turn play. We're not really sure what Fraser's trying to accomplish here when he bets. Okay, let's try and come up with some reasons though why this might be okay. Cause it does seem really strange and out of flow and small Yeah, well. I mean, even if we get past the idea that he's playing out of flow against an aggressive player for uh, questionable reasons, I would say at best, then he's betting 20K. All right, so I guess his plan is he doesn't want to check back from one pair of aces. I think that's what it is. Yeah. He wants to try and get called by the one pair of hands if Roland actually has a hand like ace nine, he very well may check it back here because the heart comes in because sure. he's in position. He figures he's only gonna get two streets of value anyway. So by betting here, we can try and get three streets, but it's not really three streets if we only bet a quarter of the pot, right? I mean, if Roland does ace nine, isn't he gonna call 35K? Isn't he gonna call 40K anyway? I mean, probably. Yeah. Probably. I mean, the frequency with which he calls would certainly justify making a bigger bet. It's gonna be a very similar frequency. That said, I don't really like this bet anyway. It's sort of weird, yeah. sort of inviting Roland, although he doesn't do this, to ship it on us when you do this sort of weird blocking bet out of nowhere. I just don't like this. Why not just check and play and flow? Roland is a very aggressive guy, especially yeah. back then. As you see, he's got six deuce off suit here, right? Right. Why not let him keep firing away? He may just feel like he has to. We have a hand that can easily call down unless a heart comes on the river. Yeah, it seems like the right plan to just let him do that. But then Roland usually is going to fold this yes. hand, right? He's yes. not, I mean, Phil's talking about how it's a good call because his hearts are good and he has straight outs. That's not the entire reason Roland's calling, if it's at it all be. the reason Roland is calling. Right, I mean, it'd be cool if you make your straight. It'd be sort of cool if you make your flush, although you just yeah, have to check it back and cool. hope it works out. It's really not that but cool. But you may be drawing dead anyway if you yeah. make your straight, right? So it has to be more than, it has to be as Roland, not Roland. Not Roland. We look at this guy, we look at Fraser, and we say, this guy's betting tiny, and I can read this dude like a book. If he checks the river, he just doesn't have it, or doesn't have a strong enough hand that I can just move in. I'm gonna have a nice pot size or so bet left, for, or at least effectively, because Fraser's the one who's gonna have that. And I can just move in, and it's gonna be really hard for him to call. Right, so Roland essentially thinks Fraser is a guy who's playing face up ABC against me. Right. I'm gonna exploit the crap out of this guy because he can't do anything about it because he doesn't even realize how face up he's playing. I can tell him whatever story I want, and I know exactly what he's looking for in my story, so I'm gonna do that. Yeah, and that makes it pretty easy.
Before we get to the next street, we want to acknowledge 888poker.com who makes this video possible. They also make it possible for you to win a main event package worth $12,500. Check it out right here. This is the lobby. You could win for all of these values, including a one cent buy-in. That's insane. Pretty darn insane. Yeah, that? darn insane. Darn insane, yeah. Use the code PokerGuys or click the link in the description. You can also deposit $10. This is for first time depositors. And you get $20 more in your bank account. But guess what? That end of April, that's done. No, so that code is now. over at the end of April. This if you've it. been thinking about it, now's the time. Use the code. Sign Do up it. for 888. Do it. What does he put Fraser on right now? Oh, maybe a king. I mean, the other thing is he might try to take it away from him, right? So if Fraser could have checked there. Hold on. 20,000 raised all in. Oh my gosh. And Roland has just cut his own throat. He's played so beautifully, but it's like the Mike Mattisau blow up. Now he might get away with it, but he would never in a million years have tried it if he knew Frazier had aces and fours. Oh my gosh, and it was the quick all in. It was a quick all in, which oftentimes means weakness. He's playing it back in his head. He's playing it back in his head. Off. If Roland, in front. if Roland made a fifty or sixty thousand dollar raise, that would seem to me to have more strength to it. But he has put all the heat on Fraser here, and you have to say this about Roland: the kid has guts, right? Roland has played just a brilliant game tonight, and this feels like has he laid an egg here, Phil? Wow, he here's, here's one of those situations where if he gets away with it... I can't put you on an end while you'd call me on a turn, Ryan. I can't, for the life of me, think what you could have. Well, and, it, and I don't blame him because he has a six and a deuce. <laughs> this is probably the most entertaining hand that, that I've seen in a while. And uh, if, if, I mean, I, I can't criticize Ian Frazier if he lays it down. Uh, I really hate the fact that Roland got involved here when he didn't have to get involved. <laughs> but if it works, he looks like a genius, right? So I think Fraser saying to himself, at the end of the day, he just can't figure out why Roland would be bluffing him here. It's so insane. I, if Fraser makes a call here, you say great call, and I wouldn't be surprised if the only thing I can put you on is Queen Ten of Arts or something, Queen Jack of Arts. That's the only thing I can get you. He knows if he's folded or can't put you in any other room. <coughs> oh my gosh, he's passed! Did you see Roland close oh his no, eyes? Oh no, he showed him! Wow! Oh no. And Roland blew up and got away Couldn't with put it. You on so, else. you know, but you gotta say, the, miles in front of miles the guy has some guts, so and he, huh? with guts cool. alone, he's gonna win that if pot. So that's how you get out of a straitjacket when you're hanging by your toes over a frozen river. You just move in. That's how Roland DeWolf does it. I yeah. don't know how Roland does it, whoever <laughs> that is. I'm not sure if Roland exists somewhere, but... It's hard to say. It is hard to say. So, this is a very interesting shove by Roland. It's also a strange play from Fraser. It's kind of like an extension of his turn play. On the turn, he was kind of like, I'm pretty weak. And on River, he's like, I'm still really weak. And yeah. Roland sniffed it out. I think it's pretty ABC from Fraser. I mean, the one thing is he's actually not as weak as you might have thought on the right. turn, right? He's a little bit stronger than that. And even on the river, you wouldn't really expect him to have aces up here. But he played it as if it's ace rag anyway. So it's effectively the same thing as ace rag. Right. right? See, when we're talking about super high level players, we might assume some other things. But from Fraser's reaction to when Roland moves in, not really knowing what to do or having a plan, it feels like he's just playing his hand kind of like, I hope you don't have a flush. And if you do, I guess you're raising and I'm folding. I mean, I don't even know if it's that. He doesn't seem to have any clue what to do right. when Roland moves in, which is sort of weird because Roland only has a pot size bet left, even a little bit less really effectively in it because that's what Fraser has in his stack. Fraser should be thinking about that before he makes his 20K bet, i.e. when I bet this, if he moves me in or raises, what do I want to do? Doesn't mean you have to adhere to that, but you have to have a plan. I mean, if you're sitting in Roland's seat and you think, okay, it's possible that Fraser could have a flush in his range, wouldn't you expect that he'd try to get more than 40k total out of the turn and river with yeah, a flush? You would. This seems like a bad way to try to get value from a flush. So I, it seems unlikely that he would have a flush. 
Which is part of why Roland pounces, I think. That said, it's not super easy for Roland to have a flush either. He definitely can, but that means he would have had to decide to call that tiny bet on the turn, which he would probably only do with bigger flushes, right? Because if he has small flushes, he's making it really cheap for Fraser to stick around with the Queen of Hearts. Right. Which you don't really want to do when you could make a small raise and force the Queen of Hearts to call if you decide you want to play that variance game anyway, and make of the pot a lot bigger and win more or you could just move them in if you want to there's all these decisions you could make but just calling with like the four high flush or the seven high flush seems weird yeah i mean it's very unlikely because of that Possible. also because you're letting fraser set the price on the turn and right. you're not getting all the value that you can so as fraser when roland moves in and smells like a sound um yes is that what he does he smells like a sound and then he's lost and he's found he's in the crowd too though and he's, he's on the hunt. He's after... He's after Fraser. Fraser. Yeah, yeah, who is you now. So, <laughs> so when Roland moves in, he's basically saying, we concluded, he's saying I have the 10 high flush or better, kind of, because we expect right. raises on the turn a lot more often from the lower flushes. Sure. But if Roland's going to be raising with six deuce off pre, that means he has all of the 10 high flushes and better. We right. might not know that as Fraser. Right. But that means he has all of those. But what are the bluffs? It's actually not that easy to come up with that many bluffs beyond the Queen of Hearts. Right, the but there's actually quite a few of those because yeah. Roland had the lead pre-flop. He had the lead on the flop. He could have any Queen of Hearts in that spot. He's not folding the Queen of Hearts on the turn for this 20k bet. And then it's the perfect blocker bluff shove. So if you do the combinatorics on this, it's about even with the 10 high flush or better versus the, the Queen X with the Queen of Hearts. So we're kind of indifferent to calling as Fraser. Well, I mean, we're getting a good enough price that actually if... If it's about even, then actually we're supposed to call. Yeah, we are call. supposed to call. But there are two other things to keep in mind, one on each side. One is we bet 20K, we bet one six of the pot, and that looks like a blocker bet. And if we're aware of that, we may know that a guy like Roland of the Wolf over there <laughs> may decide to move us in sometimes, and that would lean us a little bit more towards calling for sure. Right. However, this is our tournament life. We're three-handed. There's money to win. Uh, you know, if we can win this heat in the Premier League, there's points to win. It's all pretty cool. So our tournament life is the other side of this, where we might not care about getting a great price as much. We're still supposed to care. That's but not that's all as fair. Much. But the more I think about it, if you transport my consciousness to Fraser after he makes this bet, I would have never played the hand this way. Never. But I'm sitting there. The Wolf moves in i think my mind is just going towards i look super weak and he's trying to bluff me i have a pretty strong hand i think i have to call just because i bet 20k on the turn and the river and it's inviting bluffs yeah. and obviously roland can show up with weird bluffs not just the queen of hearts well we see that now yeah. for sure the other thing that's strange about this hand is if fraser plays either the turn or river differently i think he usually wins this hand yeah he can check the turn it's going to be hard for him to lose if he just checks the river, I don't see him folding. Or how about betting bigger on the river? How about betting 50 or 55K on the river? That can still work as a blocker bet, and it makes it a lot less likely that we're going to get bluffed. So folding's more legit in that spot. Yep, that's better too, because yeah. there's less fold equity. We don't look as weak, blah, blah, blah. By the way, we're not that weak. We're actually pretty darn right, strong. Right, so why not get more value from the ace X that Roland might have? To be fair, we are losing to all value, though, when yes, Roland moves in. certainly we are. Right? Like, I don't think Roland... Could Roland be moving in with, like, the king... Five or king no. four of something? No. Probably not, no. right? It's mostly so, just flushes. Yeah. Yeah. So like, yeah, what are we gonna do? Like, it's a tough spot. It's, we invited ourselves to get blocked. I think we're supposed to call the river, but I can understand you can make a reasonable case for folding the river yeah. as played. We should have never played it this way. No, we don't think the fold is the worst decision. We actually think it's kind of an okay-ish decision. Yeah. We think the turn and the river bets by Fraser are the big mistakes in this hand. Massive disaster. So is Fraser supposed to call the river or not as played? That's question number one. Question number two, is this brilliant by Roland or just lucky that this guy played the hand really, really weird? What do you think? Let us know in the comments. We're gonna respond right up here. If there's nothing to click on, it's coming soon. Question number three, do you disagree and think that Fraser's betting is actually good? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's another question Fair for enough. you. Do, did we get that one wrong? Because I just assumed they were gonna agree with yeah, that. Yeah, because it seems obvious to us, but maybe we're wrong. I mean, maybe. That seems unlikely. Yeah, let us know. Yeah, let us know what you think. Also, if you want to check out another sweet bluff that really has no equity in the hand, actually less equity than this. Way less. Check out this Phil Ivy bluff by clicking right up here. Oh, man, it's so good. Yeah, it's really good. So, so good. If you want to hear about how we came to all these conclusions and why we always seem to agree so much, it's because we did a 50-minute podcast. One 50, hour. An hour-long podcast, let me say, about this hand first. So we've hashed out all our ideas and things like that. You can check it out. It's called The Breakdown, presented by the Poker Guys. One hour just on this hand. Boy, do we get into it. We get into it. And also, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel.